Hi guys, today we're going to be having a look at custom grips for your Fanatec equipment, courtesy of Pineapple Grips. We'll have a look through the options they provide. We'll have a look at how to install those options. And then we'll get a general feel for them by doing a little driving. So let's get to it. I think it's only fair to first mention that Pineapple Grips are only available for formula rims made by Fanatec. Some of the older rims are not compatible, so please visit their website to check on that before ordering. With that out of the way, let's have a look at the various options that we have available. At the time of recording, Pineapple Grips have five faux lever options and eight Alcantara options available. As you can see from the faux lever options, you have slightly different textures available and all the Alcantara are the same quality fabric. If the colors here don't appeal to you, Pineapple Grips can discuss custom options and the custom options are very varied when it comes to Alcantara, as you can see from this web page. I myself have gone for quite a, I guess, boring color scheme and that I'm keeping black grips, but I'm going for perforated faux leather. I'm kind of trying to emulate the look that the modern Fanatec rims have. My Formula V2 is looking a little dated. I wanted to have a bit of a refresh. The, the product I'm just laying out on the desk here is a new product by Pineapple Grips. And effectively, this is a sample pack that allows you to get a better idea of the fabrics and textures that you can have available for your grips. Each one of these squares is 30 millimeters. That's just enough for you to get an idea of the uh, texture. When you buy one of these sample packs, you automatically get a discount code when you purchase the grips. So whilst the sample pack might seem a little pricey, this does give you a essentially a try before you buy option. And it's at least partially refunded when you buy the grips. So now we get into the meat of the project. I'm going to be replacing the existing grips from Fanatec with these new 3D printed ones from Pineapple Grips. Within the package you get from Pineapple Grips, you get a, a few tools in order to aid assembly and your grips are protected on this cardboard sheet. So let's just remove the grips from this sheet so we can get going with them and see it's got pineapple grips on the inside. You can see they're 3D printed, but they seem to be pretty well done. We've got some inserts for the threaded screws that go into here. There's quite a bit of overlap on the inside to make sure you don't have any issues with assembly. And that's effectively what it's going to look like when it's on. Okay, so now we have the daunting task of trying to disassemble our entire wheel in order to add these grips. The first thing I did is unscrew the bottom screws of the wheel. These are so we can access the plugs for the paddles in order to detach those. You can see here I'm using a seat cushion just so I don't damage the wheel whilst I'm messing around with it. So then this bottom section comes off. We unplug carefully the APM plugs and then we can set about unscrewing the APM. The advanced power module has two screws on each side. So taking that off isn't so bad. But we have to try and carefully tease the wires out. Find that the strong magnets end up meaning the, the screws end up sticking the shifter, but you can you can remove those afterwards. You just have to be a little bit more careful when you're putting it back on later. As you see here I had a little bit of difficulty getting the wire out. I used the Allen key to try and just hook the wire out of the way. Next up we start unscrewing these very tight screws that surround the wheel. And we've got six of these to remove on the front. 
got some Loctite or something on there that just makes them very difficult to to take off. Just that initial friction. Also see I'm using a magnetic screw organizer for this just so I don't lose track of which screws go where. But any any place you can stall those screws safely would be a good idea. I found it quite interesting that the, the top screws are south tappers. And now we've got to do the top ones at the back. And this effectively loosens up the housing. We remove these ones on the corner of the grips. Now the whole of this back plate now can be taken off. Before we do that, let's unscrew the grips. Six in total, so it takes a bit of time to get through them. There's no hurry. We can slowly tease off the front of the grip. I found actually it was quite difficult to do. It seemed to stick quite hard. So on the other side, I actually used a pry tool to just help it along a little bit. So flip it back on its back, and then we should be able to take the entire rear housing off. See the lovely PCB. I have to be careful of that ribbon cable. Let's just flip it back to the front. We want to just tease out the rumble motors, the haptic feedback motors, whatever you want to call them. I'm using a bit of foam here just to protect the wheel from the quick release, the PCB of the wheel. And now I've got the job of trying to get the, the rear off. I tried loosening it as I was facing the front, but it was easier to just turn it around and then slowly tease it out. You have to be careful because the rumble motors are stuck to it here. So you want to feed the motor through so from the front to the back. That allows you to get a bit more room in order to start pulling off these little glued on bits. They're holding the wire in place. So you can remove those, be careful the wire, it's easily damaged, and then do the same on the other side. On the first side of this, I found it very easy to take the, the glue um, dots off, but it's much harder on this side. They're, they're well on there. Having had practice from the first side, I, I dealt with those pretty quickly. So that's the grips off. Now all we need to do is start reassembling. The first thing I did here was to route the cable for the haptic motor through the channels that are provided in the new grips. Use the pry tool to just try and push them in so they held in place. And as soon as I was happy with their placement, I flipped the grip around. and then slowly got it to sit in. I had to wiggle the motor in just to be able to fit it into the original seating position, but I found that to be the easiest way to get the rear of the grip back on. I tried doing it on the other side without putting in the motor first and realized my folly pretty early on. It was very difficult to um, actually get it in place. So once we've got the rear of the grip in place, we can put in the strengthening posts and put on the, the front of the grip. Then we have the free supplied screws that we can just put in. So that these are the screws that came with the, the pineapple grips. I didn't over tighten it straight away because I wanted to make sure I could uh, check clearance of cables underneath later on. So once the grips are on, before putting the rear housing on, make sure that you haven't got your haptic cables stressed in any way from the, the grips. I found that actually on one side, I had pinched the cable, so I had to loosen it back off and tuck that cable back in before tightening up. And it's just a case of doing the reverse of what you did before getting the rear housing in place, popping in the four screws on the back, 
Then the 60 you removed from the front, excluding the ones at the bottom, because you've got to put your shifters back on. We have the delicate task of getting the shifters back in. Again, I use an Allen key here just to help feed cable through. I also use the, the pry tool, multi-function tools, I like to call them. We put in the two bolts. And she found that the ball ended Allen key that Fanatec give you doesn't hold the bolt in captive enough. And then you end up having the strong magnetic forces from the, the shifters pulling them back out. So I used a secondary Allen key that I had around to, to poke it in, or you could use the, the shorter end, just not the ball end. A bit of a tight squeeze to get these cables in, but generally don't plug them in until I've got both shifters in place. So once the shifters are in, plug them back in, screw on the back panel. And now you have a fully upgraded pineapple grips based wheel. You've earned yourself a nice cup of tea and then you can go for a nice race. Pineapple grips, they give you all of this information that I've gone through on installation in a nice handy page. And then once you've got to the point that you are putting on the grips, essentially after that, it's just reverse the whole process again. Without gloves, now I wasn't able to use the, the Formula V2 wheel without gloves because I didn't want them to smell up. So it's nice to have that option available and they feel nice underhand. They don't get overly sweaty. They're, they're kind of vented with the perforations. And there's a little bit of give in the fabric that yeah, is quite pleasing to, to hold. It also means that you've got a little bit of wheel room for your thumbs. They're not being held quite as captive as they were with the previous fabric. Obviously, you could still be going for Alcantara uh, with pineapple grips, but if you're going for the faux leather, it's, yeah, it's, it's very, very pleasing to, to hold in comparison, at least in my opinion. With gloves, I feel like I have a little bit more control. I'm not sure why. I feel like I've got a bit more grip on the wheel. I don't know if that's a combination of the material from a pineapple grips with the gloves I use or what's going on here, but it does feel like I have a little bit more control over the wheel without having to do any kind of death grip. They're very pleasing to look at. And you can notice the 3D printed texture on the ends, but it's not as in your face as I imagined it would be. So it's quite subtle. And because it's black, and for me, I've got dark grips. It's very difficult to notice it at all. I have to be really looking. So some might not find that aesthetically pleasing, but for me, it doesn't bother me in the least. And the grips themselves look fantastic. The grips feel pretty sturdy on the wheel. They feel somewhat more solid than the ones that I got from Fanatec, so the original ones. They actually feel a little stiffer and there's less kind of creaking going on when you're moving it around. And I don't know if it's just me and my horrible death grip, but when holding the formula wheel, I felt like there's a bit of flex on the grips and I don't feel that at all driving around here right now. So getting new grips, not the cheapest option for customization, but it does give you that personal feel. For me, I wanted to go for something which was a close approximation of Fanatec's new range and I've achieved that with the perforated grips that I have here. I am kind of tempted to to go a bit more personal on my next wheel and I might reach out to Peter and see what his options might be on that front. But overall very happy with the result and it was worth the I think it took me an hour all in to do the, the upgrade of the wheel. So it was worth that time. If you're not confident with doing that yourself, you can get pineapple grips to do that for you. So initially when I was looking at the options for pineapple grips, I didn't want to send in my whole wheel. 
Um, there's always a risk that Royal Mail or whatever delivery company you're going to be using is going to destroy your wheel in that delivery process. So I opted for the printed grips and I was a little worried that I, I wouldn't like the texture. And honestly, there is a texture there. It's not the end of the world. I mean, I, I, I've learned to live with it in a very short period of time. The grips themselves are very sturdy. Another assumption that I had going into this, that 3D printed grips won't be strong enough, but honestly, they are stronger than the grips that came off of this wheel, at least in my opinion. They flex a lot less uh, under load, and that's been really good. Part of my motivation for going for pineapple grips was that I wanted to replace the Alcantara that is on the Formula V2 for two reasons. I wanted the more modern look that you see on the latest Fanatec Formula wheels. And I also wanted a wipe clean surface that you get from having the faux lever. Overall, the product feels really good in your hands. It doesn't flex at all. It's got a little bit of give in the fabric and that allows you to get a nice firm grip for certain um, race conditions that you might need to hold on a little tighter for. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it the thumbs up. If you want to have a further chat about customization of your wheel, don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. And please subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more of this kind of video. Until next time, guys, stay safe. Bye-bye.